Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. All right, I forgot where we left off. If I'm being honest. Last night was kind of crazy for me, so I probably shouldn't have recorded last night, but I did. Oh well, I'm in a bad mood. But here we are. We're back. I gotta figure out what I'm doing. Um, so we looked at the body. If we're looking for the gardener or medicine from the store, but I would really like to find the gardener. So we'll do that. Film projector, bust of a woman. From Archive machine. There's a guy in here. All right, well, we'll talk to him. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. The man at the counter turns to you slowly. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. Weird. Tell me, have you had any trouble? We gotta assert our dominance, you know? We can't apologize with the police, you know? I haven't had any problems myself, though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. Well, we're here now. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Quite the collection. It keeps me entertained. His attention is drawn once more to the play of light and shadow on the walls behind entertained. you. Entertained? He might be high. If he is, on what? Ooh. Oh, a white check. Okay, that's what this is. Is Roy high? And if yes, then what is he on? Okay, he definitely is high. Whatever it is, you've probably done it, and many other things besides. But you can't cut through the jumble of sensations to get to the answer. A guarded man like him wouldn't tell you if you asked out loud. You might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. All right. I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. No one likes to see what you have to see every day. That's all I got. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. Well, okay. Do you, do you have guns? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly oh, sold shit. her the gun you pawned a couple days back. Oh, my guy's a dumb ass, bro. What? Sold? The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another. Alert. I sold you my gun? You... Ah. Uh... We've came here too. That just sounded really, really bad. You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol Citizens Militia. Oh my god. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. Oh god. Well, I need to know. I need to know. And I may... I may not get the information from other people. You weren't quiet. Yourself, officer. What was I like? You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your oh, life God. and that you can't trust yourself with it tonight and that you need the money. For alcohol. When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. Then I agreed to take it. You sucked on a gun? Good. Very normal. I really should have killed myself? Holy shit. I 
How much did I sell it for? Fifteen Royale. Okay. The lieutenant looks from you to Roy, and then back to you. It's clear that he hopes this tableau might still turn out to be a bad dream. It's not, though. Yikes. This has got to be the most. Wow. Bro, who is this guy in my head? Homie needs to shut the There's fuck pity up. there, too. In case you didn't notice. So sorry you had to see me like that. No apologies necessary, officer. Was the buyer a policeman? She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig. Which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit... Obsessive. But I was just happy to get rid of it. And of her. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizen's militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Yeah, it's, it's not a good look. Miraculously, his face does not reveal what's happening inside. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I sold my gun. I don't like it either. You're right that she could cast aspersions on the force. We have to find out. Looks around worried. Any idea where I can find her? My apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she was coming from or where she went. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. Great. Of course. Sure. Let me have a look. I pawn Anything else you're thinking of selling? <laughs> Another time, perhaps. Goodbye. Let's talk to Kim. Yes? Anything? No response. He just arches his brow. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There is a sudden, harsh edge to his voice. Yeah. Like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. Focus on other people's troubles, not your own. That is a relief. Your heart beats twice like a fist. The serotonin deficiency makes your teeth clench. Say nothing. The lieutenant glances at his electronic wristwatch. A moment passes. The lieutenant glances at the sports watch on his wrist. You seem to be following me. Excuse me? Nothing. You have a, a distinctive way of walking. If I were to walk in front of you, we would surely collide. I hope you don't take this the wrong way. It's just a collegial observation. In the 57th, we call it the Jamrock Shuffle. Officers from Jamrock's 41st precinct tend to move a bit erratically. What? What do you mean by that? They say it's a scene-clearing technique developed by one of your lieutenants for gathering evidence. It's erratic, yet thorough. Prioritizes containers. Okay, he simply nods. Passing along frivolous interdepartmental stereotypes is not usually his oeuvre. He regrets bringing it up. Alright, let's we're, we're out of here. A typical uh. Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. I don't care about the streetlight. The boomboxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed. Try to find something pretty and cool here. Then use it to win her back. Who are we talking about? Okay, we'll try this. Why? Wow. What's this? A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that say foul. Oh, that's the headless phone rider. The Headless Fawn Rider. It's an urban legend. About a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a fawn tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. Okay. 50 cents. Bargain price. I'll throw in the tiny... Could it be you? You see a Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. The name Sileng 
is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer! Everything's cool here! What's so cool? Everything's cool! The goods are cool, the customers are cool, the place is cool. And one more thing, officer? From out on the bay, a cool wind gathers. It sweeps into the city, tugging at the textiles hanging around the stand. Some distance away, the sound of a tin can clattering across the street can be heard. You're very cool. Bang, 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 bang! Really? Oh, yes! You got style. You got personal style. You know what you like. Okay. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. All right, I'm not really even... Don't be distracted by the flattery and funny man act. Questions. Goodbye. Too much shit, man. <laughs> The streets will flow red once more, a great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. Okay. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. Answer some questions, okay? Ask away, pig man. But I don't promise to answer. Do you know any anything about the I murder? ain't no snitch, pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. What you looking at? The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That is on her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up. Okay, Watch your back. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good morning, officers. I'm Joyce. So. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. I'll shake it. I'm glad to see you here. Her grip is tight and cold. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will, gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition, but she appears helpful. You're on a boat. You can really make our guys seem like a dumb... All right, I'll watch you on the What can you tell me about the lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. I got spoiled to something last night. Forgot what it was. Oh, his name. Our character's name. I think it's Henry. I'm not sure. I know our last name is Mullen. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. 
I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? Oh dear. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. Isn't that crazy, though? I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize. But I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. Ooh, here we go, here we go. She's a negotiator. Just float a favor at her. Insinuate. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or you can recover your badge. Though if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. This is not going quite as I hoped it would, Detective. Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and you know, not volunteers to be her henchmen. You're a henchman now? I, I don't know. I don't like either of these. I mean, I thought I was going fine. What do you want me to say? You're on a boat? This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. He doesn't let it show, but there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. I feel like I was being extremely professional. I'll handle it. It would not hurt if you tried more in the future, yes. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? You're on a boat. Why, yes I am. Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati. 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. The word, it, feels strange. Such a beautiful boat deserves a proper name. A breeze ripples through the sails and tugs at your hair. Below, the sleek, fish-like shape of the hull parts the water. Beneath that, a resounding darkness. You're reminded of something, or someone. Cool, but your boat really needs a name. Okay. How about Cordelachy 19? Why? Because it was manufactured in Revishal East by a company called Cordelachy, and its hull is 19 paces long. Looks like a fish. What? I think I'll stick with the factory name, but thank you. Okay. My slew? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. Okay. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. Dude, Kim's kind of annoying. I really do, the lieutenant thinks. Is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. You have a license? Officer, I assure you I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. The crowns of her teeth are porcelain, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Qualified pleasure craft operator. So charming. Where's the damn license? Hey, if she wants my badge, I want her badge. I just renewed license. its safety inspection last month, officers. 
It is completely seaworthy. In fact, it's taken part in not one, but two insulindic regattas. Even finished once. I need to see the license. Actually, you don't. Oh, God. Okay. The Wayfarer Act specifically denies the RCM the authority to demand anyone's operator license. It's a little known fact among us law officials. Okay. About the boat? I don't let a boat. I don't let people on boats. Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. Oh, we're in Revachol. We are. And the city of Revachol is on the island of Le Caillou. Gotcha, gotcha. I still haven't seen anyone else so boat I here. haven't seen anyone else drive a souped up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Ooh, okay. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Revachol, between the city and the islands. She's having a good time arguing against the law. Too good, perhaps. All right, all right. Good. Tell me about Wild Pines. What do you do? What we do? I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It's a giant undertaking. Okay, what do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the oh. shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. How much money do you guys have? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. A billion? Yes, past a certain point, numbers begin to seem imaginary. But they are quite real for the 72,000 employees who depend on Wild Pines for their paychecks. A conglomerate the size of Wild Pines is like a shark. If it stops moving and growing, it will die. Then what becomes of those 72,000 families? It is a tremendous responsibility. Do I really care about Wild Pines? Okay, sure. Where do you get your money? They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago, when pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantang on behalf of the suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels passed through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners? Who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? All right, whatever. She nods. You seem rich, can I have money? Is what you want to say, but it isn't that okay. easy, okay. is it? Look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, Bob. A well-kempt, yet tastefully short, Bob of dark hair. Despite the first hints of grey, she's elected to keep it. Oh, natural. Shaped into a permanent wave. Late forties style. While dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry. Wealth and all its possibilities. Now look at you, you misery-clad simian. Barely able to tie your own laces. Your armpits are lakes. A scythe of booze precedes you. Your hair sticks to your forehead and your underwear feels uncomfortable. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too. <laughs> Not ashamed to shake this leech for some go. Yes, you're too ashamed to ask this person for money. Too scared to belittle yourself in her eyes. Those half-precious stones of Odinel. Oh God, the lieutenant is here too. 
Do not dishonor the Force. As I was saying, if there's any way I may be of assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay, here we go. I am sorry. It just doesn't come out of your mouth. What does is... Money. Excuse me? I didn't hear you. Did you say money? 83% chance and I failed. Damn. Of course. Okay, tell me about the drug trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, man? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quick to say what you can't make from the stuff. Okay. Yes, but you won't get anything out of Evrat and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. What do you mean? The lorries. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they are vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. Okay. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. You'll be indebted to her, in a way. But one step ahead of the Union, in another. What proof do you have? How do you think they're financing this strike? There are thousands of unpaid dock workers going strong for the fourth month straight. There was a shakedown of local businesses preceding the strike. Many were squeezed to bankruptcy to fund it. With all due respect to these desert cacti, the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. The local businesses can scarcely provide for themselves. Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night, most likely, then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. You simply need to find one driver who will open up to you. What are lorries? Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. It sounds like she tried looking into it herself, but she's clearly not the type your typical lorry man would confide in. We already have some suspicions that one of the drivers was present at the lynching. I don't know who we're talking about, but I'll click it. The two might even be connected. Or not. Though, if you have evidence to the contrary, I'm eager to hear it. As eager as I am to share it, Lieutenant, once the job is done. Okay. Yes? We'll do it. Excellent. According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I suspect the traffic jam won't disperse for a few more days. You should have the time you need. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. All right, that's all. Of course, detective. Take care. This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Okay, why am I looking at it? What? Why am I looking at it? You have no clue. Yeah. So many walls all over Martinez, weather worn, cracked, their paint peeling. Hello again, my man. What's on your mind? You seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah, oh, man. Me and narcotics go way back. Had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But, those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? I need to get high and I'm looking for a dealer. Hey man, that's serious criminal talk. Are you trying to pull some sort of an entrapment thing on me? Okay, I like this guy, I trust him. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, man. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Who do you think could be conducting the drug trade then? 
Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachon. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. Okay, 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 goodbye. Well, okay, wait, wait, what are you hauling? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. You're funny. Time to arrest him. Can't even get a few jokes past you, my man. I've got another haul of foul cargo. Mostly sporting goods, tracksuits, and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. Can I get one of those tracksuits? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. All right, all right. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. See ya. The small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... Okay, excuse me, I'd like to ask one No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Grandma? Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Her hair is gray like lead. She does not look too good. No, this one is a monster in disguise. What the fuck? If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Snap, okay. Where am I? Who are you? Like a magician recalling a subject from hypnosis, you jolted her back into reality. The smile on her face has disappeared, replaced by the weary aspect of a cornered beast. Uh, never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. When else would you be? Back in Mefka, during the time of the revolution. The side walls and cafes are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new Boyadero picture starring Gabriel Buendero. Until you came along, that is. I have questions for you. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. There's something off about this woman. Tell her to show you the soles of her boots. Maybe she was at the hanging mm, I somehow. got it, but good idea. Now what do you want with an old woman's boots, Harif? Help me out here. Please? I think you should let me get back to Gabriel Buenguerro. You are not Gabriel. Gabriel doesn't say please. She's wearing sturdy worker's boots made of black leather. Buckles run across. The sole is also made of leather. Okay. Just before Gabriel, it was the coronation of Franco Negro. Now, there was a real man. It was. And then it was no more. And I was no longer holding my father's hand. He was no longer descending the stairs in Ryle, the crowd. Perhaps it was another Herefe who came and woke me up, looking at my boots, asking questions, or... Uh... As she says, Carnival, she gestures to the empty square with the statue and the machines. I could have told you that from just looking at them, the size is 37. The feet of a little girl, they fit well on the pedals. Alright, what are you hauling? Diamonds. Really? Of course not. But wouldn't it God. be marvelous if I was? Yep. Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. So you don't know what you're hauling? I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. She says that as if something. Narcotic is the real reason. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, it's so much more than a high where I go, Harife. It's low. I go to the bottom. Yeah, it's definitely some kick. Some terrible kick in the dark. A sleep kick. Perhaps you can find out later. What if the cargo is contraband? Then it's contraband, Loman. What? Do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like bad hand, Hermenegildo. 
Okay. You seem like a woman who knows a thing or two about drugs. What do I need drugs for, Loman? What I see, what I feel, the great adversary, no drugs can compare. God. Okay. The adversary. Yes. There is a protagonista and an adversary. I am on the side of the adversary. There's no coming back from that hole. I don't like the sound of any of that. Sounds like a horrible drug. The worst one of them all. Where could I get my hands on that? If you don't know, <laughs> why would I want to do that? For money. Loman. What in the name of God are you talking That's about? That's what I'm saying. What are you talking about? Can we leave? Good. I don't care about dr Goodbye. Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Mesky. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece secured and mounted in the air, with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the Squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philip II, the Opulent, father of Philip IV, the Insane. Not a good track record of mental health in that family. We can roll. We can try. What did he do? You have no idea what you did a week ago. How would you know what this guy did many centuries ago? High above you, the king stands triumphantly oblivious to your memory trouble. A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy, grad-made machine is well kept for such an old machine. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. Racist nationalist paraphernalia, not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. This is our guy, okay, okay. Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is, drapes it all over his machine. He was acting tough before. This probably scared him a bit. Who knows when it will come in handy. A slightly scared, racist lorry man. The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox. Officials Precinct 57, how may I assist you? Take me to Sylvie. Of course. What is her number, officer? Oh, shit. Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Nice. Kim coming in clutch. Received. Hold on, officer. Okay. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get to the phone. Just wait. Relax. Okay, okay, okay. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? Ooh, okay, hello, hello. All right. Hello, officer, what can I do for you? You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. Shit. There is no resentment in her tone. She wants you to ask her out. No question oh. about it. So th these voices in my head are conflicting. Weird. Okay. So I get to choose which one to listen to. Was it you who called the police? No, not me. This bother you? What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the union already knew about the court. What does this union have to do with any... Oh my god, okay. No one calls the police. 
The Union would get angry. What do you mean by that? You know, what the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Garbage. I am the authority. Okay. Tell me exactly why you didn't call. I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the okay. error of her ways. Chill, 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 chill. No, don't push her. It sounds as if she's about to cry. Oh my god, okay. What others? The other people who live around here. Local people, I... I didn't want trouble. Her voice is resigned and weak. Okay. You don't live here. You don't understand. Squealing is frowned upon here. Everything is dealt with, well, by the Union, internally. Please, I just didn't want any trouble. Don't worry about it. You do? Oh. What else can I do for you? Do you know who made that call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Oh, God, hello? Okay, next question. Yeah, go on. Why'd you quit your job? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm... not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Fair enough. Maybe, I don't know. I just know I have to take some time off right now. I'm not gonna ask her that. Have you seen my badge? Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. The law. Oh. No. I haven't, sorry. Real policemen have uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? That's a good question. He does, Kim doesn't have a uniform. He's in plain clothes, voluntarily. It's different from not knowing where your uniform is. That's true. There are officers who wear the signature Perseus black uniforms to the highest ranks in the RCM and end up buried in them as well. Others do it more casually. Looks like you're one of them. Have you seen my policeman uniform? Uniform? I, I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. The disco things. Disco things. Somewhere in a dank rental apartment, two police officers stand in the dark. Trash and liquor bottles cover the floor. What is this Things mean? are not good. One of the men, trying not to slip on old newspapers, makes his way to the window and pulls the curtains apart. Roaches scatter as the light comes in. God damn. Officer Michelle Elfboy Williams speaks to himself. His partner, Sundance Fisher, looks at the patrol uniform he's wearing, then at an identical suit frame on the wall. It's blue and covered in dust. Let's get the fuck out of there. He turns to Williams. He hasn't been here in days. That's creepy. Okay. Thanks, Sylvie. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Why? Yeah, why is she angry? No. How she doesn't have a problem these? with you. It must be someone else she's angry about. Some other guy. Like God. I don't believe that. Trust me. You wouldn't want to be the guy here. You know how it is. Yak, yak, nag, nag. Amen. No. You're the guy. You're Lieutenant Love. Matchmaker extraordinaire. Help the poor girl out. Lest she turns into a spinster. I'm happy to help, but maybe I could do so without... What the fuck? My cats are freaks. Okay. What misogyny? I'm just telling things the way they are. Can't a man be honest in his own head anymore? You have to act, Lieutenant Love. You have to calm that hysteric down. Tell it you've got everything under control. Then go and have a little boy's talk with God himself. Think you can do that, Lieutenant Love? Daddy is going to take you on his lap, little darling. Call was terminated by the other party. Anything else, officer? It's on. 
The love quest is on. Too late, everyone. It's happening? on. Take it to Gart now. Direct me to Sylvie. Just a second. I'll be there. Sylvie Malaika on the line. Yes. Hello? It's the police again. Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? Want to grab a cup of coffee with me? No, absolutely not. Okay, we're not... Yeah. Ouch. That's like 20 points of pride damage, okay, right? Goodbye. You hear the call breaking up on the other end. Anything else I can help you with, no. officer? 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set. Alright, see you guys in the next episode. Ooh, weird game so far. Okay. Peace.